Hi, third graders. Thanks for joining me for Read Aloud today. When we left off, we were in Jack Will's perspective in our book Wonder by R.J. Palacio. Um, we learned that at first Jack was a little nervous to be friends with Augie because he knew how different he looked. Um, but ultimately he decided he knew someone needed to be kind to Augie and him and Augie became friends. Um, and he really started to enjoy his company and he was really confused when Augie stopped being friends with him. He still doesn't know the reason why, although he does have a clue. So as we read today, we'll have to find out if Jack Will learns any more um, about the fact that Augie found out what he was saying about him behind his back and how mean it was. So our next chapter today is called Snow. The first snow of winter hit right before Thanksgiving break. School was closed, so we got an extra day of vacation. I was glad about this because I was so bummed about the whole August thing, and I also wanted some time to chill without having to see him every day. Also, waking up to a snow day is just about my favorite thing in the world. I love that feeling when you first open your eyes in the morning and you don't even know why everything seems different than usual. Then it hits you. Everything is quiet. No horns honking. No buses going down the street. Then you run over to the window, and outside, everything is covered in white. The sidewalks, the trees, the cars on the, tr on the street, your window panes. And when that happens on a school day, and you find out your school is closed, well, I don't care how old I get, I'm always going to think that's the best feeling in the world. And I'm never going to be one of those grown-ups that uses an umbrella when it's snowing, ever. Dad's school was closed, too, so he took me and Jamie sledding down Skeleton Hill in the park. They say a little kid broke his neck there while sledding down the hill a few years ago, but I don't know if this is actually true or just one of those legends. On the way home, I spotted this banged-up wooden sled kind of propped against the old Indian Rock Monument. Dad said to leave it. It was just garbage, but something told me I could make it the greatest sled ever. So dad let me drag it home and I spent the rest of the day fixing it up. I super glued the broken slats together and wrapped some heavy duty duct tape around them for extra strength. Then I spray painted the whole thing white with the paint I had gotten from Alabaster Sphinx that I with the paint I had gotten for the Alabaster Sphinx I was making for the Egyptian Museum project. When it was all dry, I painted lightning and gold letters on the middle piece of wood and I made a little lightning bolt above the letters. It looked pr pretty professional, I have to say. Dad was like, wow, Jackie, you were right about that sled. The next day, we went back to Skeleton Hill with lightning. It was the fastest thing I've ever ridden. So, so, so much faster than the plastic sleds we'd been using. And because it had gotten warmer outside, the snow had become crunchier and wetter. Good packing snow. Me and Jamie took turns on lightning all afternoon. We were in the park until our fingers were frozen and our lips had turned a little blue. Dad had to practically, to practically drag us home. By the end of the weekend, the snow had started turning gray and yellow, and then a rainstorm turned most of the snow to slush. When we got back to school on Monday, there was no snow left. It was rainy and yucky the first day back from vacation. A slushy day. That's how I was feeling inside, too. I nodded hey to August for the first time um, that day. We were in front of the lockers. He nodded hey back. I wanted to tell him about lightning, but I didn't. Our next chapter is called Fortune Favors the Bold. Mr. Brown's December precept was Fortune Favors the Bold. We were all supposed to write a paragraph about some time in our lives when we did something very brave and how because of it something good happened to us. I thought about this a lot to be truthful. I have to say that I think the bravest thing I ever did was become friends with August, but I couldn't write about that, of course. I was afraid we'd have to read these out loud or Mr. Brown would put them up, up on the bulletin board like he does sometimes. So instead I wrote this lame thing about how I used to be friends or how I used to be afraid of the ocean when I was little. It was dumb, but I couldn't think of anything else. I wonder what August wrote about. He probably had a lot to choose, from, to choose from. Our next chapter is called Private School. My parents are not rich. I say this because people sometimes think that everyone who goes to private school is rich, but that isn't true with us. 
Dad's a teacher and mom's a social worker, which means they don't have the kinds of jobs where people make gazillions of dollars. We used to have a car, but we sold it when Jamie started kindergarten at Beecher Prep. We don't live in a big townhouse or in one of those doorman buildings along the park. We live on top on the top floor of a five-story walk-up we rent from an old lady named Dona Petra, all the way on the other side of Broadway. That's code for the section of North River Heights where people don't want to park their cars. Me and Jamie share a room. I overhear my parents talking about things like, can we do without an air conditioner one more year? Or maybe I can work two jobs this summer. So today at recess, I was hanging out with Julian and Henry and Miles. Julian, who everyone knows is rich, was like, I hate that I have to go back to Paris this Christmas. It's so boring. Dude, but it's like Paris, I said. Believe me, it's so boring, he said. My grandmother lives in this house in the middle of nowhere. It's like an hour away from Paris in this tiny, tiny, tiny village. I swear to God, nothing happens there. I mean, it's like, oh, wow, there's another fly on the wall. Look, there's a new dog sleeping on the sidewalk. Yippee! I laugh. Sometimes Julian could be very funny. Though my parents are talking about throwing a big party this year instead of going to Paris. I hope so. What are you doing over break? asked Julian. Just hanging out, I said. You're so lucky, he said. I hope it snows again, I answered. I got this new sled that is so amazing. I was about to tell them about lightning, but Miles started talking first. I got a new sled too, he said. My dad got it from Hamacher Schlemmer. It's so state of the art. How could a sled be state of the art, said Julian. It was like $800 or something. Whoa! We should all go sledding and have a race down Skeleton Hill. That hill is so lame, answered Julian. Are you kidding, I said. Some kid broke his neck there. That's why it's called Skeleton Hill. Julian narrowed his eyes and looked at me like I was the biggest moron in the world. It's called Skeleton Hill because it was an ancient Indian burial ground. Duh, he said. Anyways, it should be called Garbage Hill now. It's so freaking junky. Last time I was there, it was so gross, like with soda cans and broken bottles and stuff. He shook his head. I left my old sled there, said Miles. It was, it was a piece of junk, and someone took it, too. Maybe a hobo wanted to go sledding, laughed Julian. Where did you leave it, I said. By the big rock at the bottom of the hill, and I went back the next day, and it was gone. I couldn't believe somebody actually took it. Here's what we can do, said Julian. Next time it snows, my dad could drive us all up this golf course in Westchester that makes Skeleton Hill look like nothing. Hey, Jack, where are you going? I had started to walk away. I've got to get a book out of my locker, I lied. I just wanted to get away from them fast. I didn't want anyone to know that I was the hobo who had taken the sled. So Jack is embarrassed because he doesn't have as much money as the other kids. So for him, finding that sled was really exciting and he made it really special. But the other kids were making fun of it because they got really expensive ones. And um, they knew someone had taken their really old sled. Our next chapter is called In Science. I'm not the greatest student in the world. I know some kids actually like school, but I honestly can't say I do. I like some parts of school, like PE and computer class and lunch and recess, but all in all, I'd be fine without school. And the thing I hate the most about school is all the homework we get. It's not enough that we have to sit through class after class and try to stay awake while they fill our heads with all of the stuff we will probably never need to know like how to figure out the surface area of a cube, or what is the difference between kinetic and potential energy. I'm like, who cares? I've never heard my parents use the word kinetic in my life. I hate science the most out of all of my classes. We get so much work, it's not even funny. And the teacher, Miss Rubin, is so strict about everything, even the way we write our headings on the top of our papers. I once got two points off of a homework assignment because I didn't put the date on top. Crazy stuff. When me and August were still friends, I was doing okay in science because August sat next to me and always let me copy his notes. August has the neatest handwriting of anybody I've ever seen who's a boy. 
Even his script is neat, up and down perfectly with really small round loopy letters. But now that we're ex-friends, it's bad because I can't ask him to let me copy his notes anymore. So I was kind of scrambling today, trying to take notes about, with, about what Miss Rubin was saying. My handwriting is awful. When all of a sudden she started talking about the fifth grade science fair project, how we all had to choose a science project to work on. While she was saying this, I was thinking, we just finished the Egypt project. Now we have to go start a whole new thing. And in my head, I was going, oh no, like the kid in Home Alone with his mouth hanging open and his hands on his face. This is the face I was making on the inside. And then I thought of those pictures of melting ghost faces I've seen somewhere where the mouths are open wide and they're screaming. And then all of a sudden, this picture flew into my head, this memory, and I knew what summer had meant by bleeding scream. It's so weird how it just came to me in the splash. Someone in the homeroom had dressed up as the bleeding scream on Halloween. I remember seeing him a few desks away from me, and then I remember not seeing him again. Oh man, it was August. All of this hit me in science class while the teacher was talking. Oh man, I had been talking to Julian about August. Oh man, now I understood. I was so mean. I don't even know why. I'm not even sure what I said, but it was bad. It was only a minute or two. It's just that Julian and everyone else thought I was so weird for hanging out with August all the time, and I felt really stupid. And I don't know why I said that stuff. I was just kind of going along. I am so stupid. I can't believe it. Oh my gosh, he was supposed to come as Boba Fett. I would never have said that stuff in front of Boba Fett, but that was him, the bleeding scream, sitting at the desk looking over at us. That long white mask with the fake squirting blood, the open wide mouth like the ghoul was crying. That was him. I felt like I was going to puke. So Julian finally figured out why August is upset and he figured out that August was the bleeding scream and he doesn't even remember what he says and he said and he was trying to fit in but he knows it was something pretty horrible. Our next chapter is called Partners. I didn't hear a word of what Miss Rubin was saying after that. Blah 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 science fair project. Blah 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 partners. Blah blah blah. It was like the way the grown-ups talk in Charlie Brown movies. Like someone is talking underwater. Wah, 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 wah. Then all of a sudden, Miss Rubin started pointing to kids around the class. Reed and Tristan, Maya and Max, Charlotte and Zemina, August and Jack. She pointed to us when she said this. Miles and Amos, Julian and Henry, Savannah and... I didn't hear the rest. Huh, I said. The bell rang. So don't forget to get together with your partners and choose a project from the list, guys, said Miss Rubin as everyone started taking off. I looked up at August, but he had already put his backpack on and was practically out the door. I must have had a silly look on my face because Julian came over and said, Looks like you and your best butt are partners. He was smirking when he said that. I hated him so much right then. Hello, Earth to Jack Will, he said when I didn't answer him. Be quiet, Julian. I was putting my le loose leaf binder away and my backpack, and I just wanted him to be away from me. You must be so bummed that you got stuck with him, she said. You should tell Miss Rubin you want to switch partners. I bet she would let you. No, she wouldn't, I said. Ask her. No, I don't want to. Miss Rubin, Julian said, turning around and raising his hand at the same time. Miss Rubin was erasing the chalkboard at the front of the room. She turned when she heard her name. No, Julian, I whisper screamed. What is it, boys? She said impatiently. Can we switch partners if we wanted to, said Julian, looking very innocent. Me and Jack had this science fair project idea we wanted to work on together. Well, I guess we could arrange that, she started to say. No, it's okay, Miss Rubin, I said quickly, heading out the door. Bye. Julian ran after me. Why'd you do that, he said, catching up to me at the stairs. We could have been partners. You don't have to be friends with the freak if you don't want to be, you know. And that's when I punched him, right in the mouth. So we know punching is never a way to solve problems. Um, 
you always want to use your words because we never want to hurt someone. But at that moment, Jack was just so angry realizing what he had said and how mean Julian was being and how angry at himself um, he was that he just snapped and he punched him in the face. Our next chapter is called Detention. Some things you just can't explain. You don't even try. You don't know where to start. All your sentences would jumble up like a giant knot if you opened your mouth. Any words you used would come out wrong. Jack, this is very, very serious, Mr. Tushman was saying. I was in his office, sitting on a chair across from his desk, looking at the picture of the pumpkin on the wall behind him. Kids get expelled for this kind of thing, Jack. I know you're a good kid and I don't want that to happen, but you have to explain yourself. This is so not like you, Jack, said Mom. She had come from work as soon as they called her. I could tell that she was going back and forth between being really mad and really surprised. I thought you and Julian were friends, said Mr. Tushman. We're not friends, I said. My arms were crossed in front of me. But to punch someone in the mouth, Jack, said Mom, raising her voice. I mean, what were you thinking? She looked at Mr. Tushman. Honestly, he's never hit anyone before. He's just not like that. Julian's mouth was bleeding, Jack, said Mr. Tushman. You knocked out a tooth. Did you know that? It was just a baby tooth, I said. Jack, said Mom, shaking her head. That's what Nurse Molly said. You're missing the point, Mom said. I just want to know why, said Mr. Tushman, raising his shoulders. It'll just make everything worse, I sighed. Just tell me, Jack. I shrugged, but I didn't say anything. I couldn't. If I told him Julian had called August a freak, then he'd go talk to Julian about it, and then Julian would tell him about how I had badmouthed August too, and everyone would find out about it. Jack, said Mom. I started to cry. I'm sorry. Mr. Tushman raised his eyebrows and nodded, but he didn't say anything. Instead, he kind of blew into his hands like you do when your hands are cold. Jack, he said. I don't really know what to say here. I mean, you punched a kid. We have rules about that kind of thing. Automatic expulsion, and you're not even trying to explain yourself. I was crying a lot by now, and the second Mom put her arms around me, I started to bawl. Let's, um, said Mr. Tushman, taking his glasses off to clean them. Let's do this, Jack. We're out for winter break as of next week anyway. How about you stay home for the rest of this week, and then after winter break, you'll come back and everything will be fresh and brand new. Clean slate, so to speak. Am I being suspended, I sniffled. Well, he said, shrugging. Technically, yes, but it's only for a couple days. And I'll tell you what, while you're at home, you take the time to figure out what happened. And if you want to write me a letter explaining what happened, and a letter to Julian apologizing, then we don't even need to put this on your permanent record, okay? You go home and talk about it with your mom and dad, and maybe in the morning, you'll figure it all out a little bit more. That sounds like a good plan, Mr. Tushman, said Mom, nodding. Thank you. Everything is going to be okay, said Mr. Tushman, walking out over to the door, which was closed. I know you're a nice kid, Jack, and I, knew, I know that sometimes even nice kids do dumb things, right? He opened the door. Thanks for being so understanding, said Mom, shaking his hand at the door. No problem. He leaned over and told her something quietly I couldn't hear. I know. Thank you, said Mom. So, kiddo, he said, putting his hand on my shoulders. Think about what you've done, okay, and have a great holiday. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. I wiped my nose with my sleeve and started walking out the door. Say thank you to Mr. Tushman, said Mom, tapping my shoulder. I stopped and turned, but I couldn't look at him. Thank you, Mr. Tushman, I said. Bye, Jack, he answered, and I walked out the door. Our last chapter that we're going to read for today is called Season's Greetings. Weirdly enough, when we got back home and Mom brought in the mail, there were holiday cards from both Julian's family and August's family. Julian's holiday card was a picture of Julian wearing a tie, looking like he was about to go to the opera or something. August's card was a, cute, uh, was a picture of a cute old dog wearing reindeer antlers, a red nose, and red booties. There was a cartoon bubble over the, head, the dog's head that read, Ho, ho, ho. On the inside of the card, it read, To the Will family, peace on earth, love Nate, Isabel, Olivia, August, and Daisy. 
Cute card, huh? I said to Mom, who had hardly said a word to me all the way home. I think she honestly just didn't know what to say. That must be their dog, I said. Do you want to tell me what's going on inside your head, Jack? She said seriously. I bet you they put a picture of their dog on the card every year, I said. She took the card from my hands and looked at the picture and then raised her eyebrows and her shoulders and gave me back the card. We're very lucky, Jack. There's so much we take for granted. I know, I said. I knew what she was talking about with her having to say it. I heard that Julian's mom actually photoshopped August's face out of the class picture when she got it. She gave a copy to a couple of the other moms. That's just awful, said mom. People are just, they're just not always so great. I know. Is that why you hit Julian? No. And then I told her about why I punched Julian. And I told her that August was my ex-friend now. And I told her all about Halloween. So it sounds like Julian, or, um, it sounds like Jack Will is finally ready to share with his mom what happened. And he didn't, he got suspended, but he didn't get expelled. And the principal is wanting him to think about what he did and hopefully explain once he has a little more time. So we'll have to see what happens when we read it again tomorrow. Um, thanks so much for joining me for Read Aloud. I hope you enjoyed reading Wonder, and I'm excited to read more of Jack Will's perspective with you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.